before COVID, I was supposed to have a full knee replacement on my knee. Um, COVID came along, surgery got cancelled. Um, they tried again at the, they started giving me appointment again for a clean up of the cartilage, which is the simple one where they go in arthroscopically through keyhole surgery. Uh, they cancelled that eight times in all until it finally took place. Uh, I was offered an appointment at Hinchingbrook Hospital in uh, Cambridgeshire. Um, I went in there on the Friday morning. They did the surgery mid afternoon and I came out and um, the other half picked me up and took me home. Uh, didn't think too much of it at the time. It was uh, uncomfortable, but then you'd expect it to be. I went to bed, woke up the next morning in quite severe pain. It took me about an hour and uh, a quarter to um, sit up and slide across the bed. Um, took me about another hour to throw on some clothes and then about an hour and a half to get down the stairs on my bottom because I just couldn't walk and it was too bad. And I told the other half when I got down, i go back up there tonight. Um, she rang some people and they ha came along and brought out a couple of bits of equipment to try and help and said, see how it goes. So I spent a very uncomfortable night on her riser recliner chair. Um, and then on Sunday, it got so bad. Uh, I can't remember all of it, I'm afraid, but I think what happened was it was getting so bad. She called for more advice and they said, um, dial 999 and get an ambulance to come and get him which of course took a few hours due to the pressure the NHS is under. Um, I got taken to a different hospital it ran me into uh, another hospital to the accident in emergency and um, they did some blood tests and uh, infection tests and stuck needles in my leg and pulled out some interesting looking coloured liquids once they found a needle that was big enough to allow it to pass um, and scheduled me for surgery the next morning. Um, I went in and they did a clean up on it um, and I was then in hospital. I, they put me on five IV drips a day plus other antibiotics. Um, I had a further clean out a week later. Um, I spent a total of four weeks in the hospital. At the last part of the fourth week they put what they call a pick line into my um, upper arm which runs a, a line through to just above the heart and that was so that when I went home I could continue with IVs administered by a pick team of, which are nurses that come out to your house every day and run IVs through. Um, spent another three weeks on that before my um, CRP, the infection count, was down to a level they considered uh, okay, when I went into hospital, the accident emergency test did the, did the test, but it was 468 on my CRP. Um, I'm told anything over 10 is considered high, so I was doing quite well. Um, they let me out when it got below 40 and the antibiotics had brought it back down to normal. So after three weeks of the pick line at home, um, I'm left with uh, still sleeping most of the time on a hospital bed in the living room because climbing the stairs is very difficult. Um, I've got no knee joint with all no cartilage in the knee joint, so I'm, it's bone on bone there, which is exciting. The other half just said from behind me across the room. Um, very painful, um, and the knee swells up regularly um, every other day or so. It decides to come up like a balloon and then go back down again. Uh, and they told me I've been left with septic. It was septic arthritis, was what they called it, because it's the way it ate the joint. Um, but no, they didn't mention it at all. And I only found out recently, I was just um, Googling to get some information as to what was going on uh, for myself, because it, it was a case of looking into what happens, what happens to other people um, and what's going to happen with the, you know, as I said, with the risks of the hopefully upcoming surgery. Um, so I was pretty certain I can't, you know, I, I, I knew I wouldn't be the only one, but I mean, for me, it was quite shocking to when I found your website, it was quite shocking to read the figures that there are more people die of this. Than there are of the three cancer types combined that you mentioned as uh, one of the figures on your website. Do everything that you've been putting off before you go in because you never know what might happen afterwards. Expect the worst and be grateful when it's the best. 
if I'd known what was what was going to happen, I would have been more prepared for what was going to go wrong. But I was happy go lucky and thinking, oh, it's just a day. Um, I even had a an epidural because uh, to stay awake for it. And as I said, it took them forty minutes, and now I've had several months. Um, so message to others, if, if, you, if you know it's sepsis, um, don't be afraid to talk about it because uh, if you're here talking about it, you're obviously doing reasonably well at the moment, but there's nothing to say you're now going to live with the threat of what it can do for the rest of your life. So don't bottle up feelings that you've got. Um, talk to someone, whether it's a partner, uh, a work colleague or... or um, a helpline with yourselves to speak to somebody but you, you you're not alone I've, I've found out hopefully other people are going to find 